Without sovereignty, a nation cannot exist. Without borders, it cannot be defined or protected. A very good evening. This is Face the Nation. Our topic of discussion today is the true meaning of democracy, the people's sovereignty and the social contract. All of this we discuss, of course, against a backdrop where the local government elections, or the postal voting at least for the local government elections, have been postponed. And the Elections Commission has informed the Supreme Court that they are not in a position to hold the local government election as planned on the 9th of March. So to discuss these matters and more, we've got, uh, well, four expert panellists on our show, as we always do. Uh, first, I would like to take this opportunity to welcome Melinda Rajapaksa, the additional Director General of the Department of Government Information. Thank you very much, Melinda, for joining us on our show. Also, we have President's Counsel Yuar De Silva, no stranger to face the nation. He is, of course, a former president of the Bar Association of Sri Lanka, an eminent legal practitioner and also currently an advisor to the Ministry of Justice. Uh, we've also got with us Kusum Vijay Tilaka, again, no stranger to our show. Welcome back to Face the Nation, Kusum, Kusum Vijay Tilaka. He's a political commentator. Uh, and uh, last and certainly not least, we have attorney at law, J.M. Vijay Bandara. Thank you very much, sir, for taking time off your busy schedule and appearing here on Face the Nation. So let's get right into it. The true meaning of democracy, the people's sovereignty and the social contract. Uh, given the extreme or slightly legal nature of the matter, uh, I first uh, grant an opportunity, of course, uh, to President's Counsel Yuar De Silva, former President of the Bar Association and advisor to the Ministry of Justice, to make your opening statement on this topic, the true meaning of democracy, the people's sovereignty and the social contract. Your time starts now. Thank you very much for uh, uh, asking me to come here and express my views. And it is very important to discuss at this stage about the election. Then only we can talk about democracy and all this. Thing. People are talking about election. So uh, election is very important to the people to show their faith or against. Mm. So that is why we say it is a mandatory requirement. And you can't deny that. If you are going to deny that, then if you are not going to uh, allow the people to uh, put their vote, it's fundamental error. And it's, it's not correct to do that. But at the same time, in our law, it is very clearly stated that every law has an exception. So there are exceptions for the particular subject. So here also, election is important and it should be done and at this stage whether we are in a position to do so is the issue so in the first instance it was postponed for various reasons and then it has come to a point where the election commission has clearly stated that we are ready for the election that is their duty to have elections it is their duty so they have to have their preparation and they have done it and then of course is the issue come where whether the money will be allocated for the purpose of having this election in a proper way mm -hmm. so not only for the election commission they have to have various uh, categories are involved in that so now we know the government press is heavily important and they are the people who are printing these election uh, ballot papers and other documents and the police also very important and then thereafter the uh, vehicles are important uh, the fuel is also very important uh, for this type of election so for these things if the finance ministry is not in a proper way or no, not in a position to uh, give those uh, monies to the relevant people, authorities, then there is a problem. The people say that during the uh, parliament sessions where they, they have said that the money had been allocated for the election. True, it is clear, but it is not that we must inform them masses that the money has not put into a particular bank account or in a particular place where you can get at any time the money and spend it here of course it is not there they say we are ready to spend 
this amount of money for this selection. This is how the uh, financial statements are prepared. They are expecting money. That is why, if the money is there, then they, of course, certainly they are ready to pay that, allocate the money if the money is available. Now, the uh, you can remember this uh, secretary to the Ministry of uh, Finance has gone to the Supreme Court mm. and he has filed an affidavit. That is very important. So people can talk a lot of things. The affidavit is very important. The affidavit says clearly they are not in a position to allocate this money in that way. So we are not in a position to give that money. So that is how the election commission has gone to the Supreme Court and stated that I am not. We are not in a position to uh, hold the election on this particular day. That does not mean that we are not going to have this election forever. So we have to see now at the moment. The president has the power to dissolve the parliament and even uh, if he wants, he can go to presidential election as well. So we'll see what is going to happen in future. Thank you very much, President's Council. You are the silver, of course. Uh, during the course of the program, if our viewers have any questions that they would like us to pose to the panelists or they would like more information on, uh, you can text your questions to 071 double five eight double seven double eight once again uh, that's zero seven one double five eight double seven double eight you can text us either via an sms or via whatsapp as well uh, moving on to the rest of the opening statements uh, it's now the opportunity of kusum vijay tilaka political commentator thank you uh, very much for having me uh, and a good evening to everybody and good evening to everyone at home um, the title of today's program is Democracy, uh, Sovereignty and the Social Contract. Um, I think it's important to state at the outset that all three uh, of those um, items are essentially philosophical concepts, right? They're concepts that have been developed over centuries, in some case a thousand plus years. Now, I remember going to university uh, some time ago, quite, quite some time ago, and um, one of the most popular programs in England that I noticed everyone taking on was um, called PPE, uh, Politics, Philosophy and Economics. And I remember thinking that's a very strange sort of mix of subjects. Um, but there's a reason for that. That's because economics, politics and philosophy are intrinsically linked. There's no way to separate the two. Everything that we talk about uh, in terms of democracy, sovereignty um, and the social contract, um, they stem from the Enlightenment period of the 17th and the 18th century. Uh, figures like John Locke, Adam Smith, Tocqueville, they are not only figures of economics, they are figures of philosophy. And their links to modern economic theories is uh, well discussed. Um, the central doctrine of that Enlightenment period um, was that individuals must be free from the coercions of concentrated power. So that concentrated power can be the government, it can be a feudal system, it can be the church, whatever you call it. The point is that democracy is a value in itself. It doesn't need to be especially defended. It's like freedom. It's considered essential to human nature. Now in Sri Lanka right now, I think everyone on this, around this table will agree we are going through historic reforms, right? Mm. Painful, the, the word we're using is painful reforms. So if these uh, are so painful, I, I just asked the question from my colleagues, should the people have some input into uh, these reforms? Uh, I don't think anyone here will argue that the people are responsible for our current economic crisis. Um, we are bankrupt because of policy decisions, because of decisions made by political elites. Now, we are now going into a period of reforms and economic changes, changing the entire rules of our economy. Um, are we going to be led into that process by the same set of economic elites? Um, I have to say that that makes me very uneasy and I understand the legal uh, conversation around it and my colleague laid it out very well, but I think that's, that's lawyer speak, right? Um, it's a matter of priorities. Are we willing to prioritize the people's mandate before we go in for these reforms? Or are we, are we looking at reforms from a top-down manner, telling the people this is the pill, you have to swallow it? I submit that that course is going to lead to further agitation. and. I don't personally believe that there should be another Aragalea 2.0, whatever you want to call it. But it might be inevitable if we go on with this process whereby 
the people are just told, stand on the sidelines, let us, the political elite, let us handle it. Um, I don't think that's going to end well. So that's my opening statement. Thank you very much, uh, Kusum Vijay Tilaka, political commentator. We now turn our attention to Milinda Rajapaksa, Additional Director General, Department of Government Information. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for having me joining this program after some time. It has been one of our favorite programs when we were entering the politics in 2018 uh, and have such a great panel, especially uh, uh, who can actually talk about this topic in a very philosophical and ideological manner too. And now, <clears throat> looking at this topic uh, and my participation in this program, I was thinking I should more concern on the political aspect being probably the uh, only active politician in this uh, room. Mm. I contested in 2018. I remember when we contested for the election in 2018, how many, the amount of rallies and protests I attended as a young representative of SLPP asking for that election in 2018. So that is also after Yahapalane government disappeared the provincial council election. Provincial council election is very important in this country in many ways. Some people might like it. Even the small groups within our party don't like uh, provincial council. But as a young person who is very much in supportive of the electoral, not the electoral system as per se, but the elections of this country, uh, we really hoped the Yahapalne government, more than any other government, mm. would support the provincial council election, but that disappeared forever. Even today, we don't know where to find the provincial council election. And in 2018, I remember I went and did, we were part of a protest in front of the election commission. We were uh, doing protest uh, somewhere close to the Supreme Court. We were doing protest uh, in uh, Fort asking for the 2018 local council election, we then later which happened. And we changed the political discourse of this country in 2008. Then it led to different other changes too. And today we are again in a quite a similar situation, but then, but when you are looking at my political camp, it looks like we are in other side of the uh, pitch now, which is not. That also I want to uh, clearly state that as a party, SLPP, if you ask, we are in very much favor of any election, not only this local council election. We, at numerous places, we have openly stated our uh, position for this election that government should hold elections on time, respecting uh, the democracy and the sovereignty of people, number one. Number two, if because of any reasonable reason beyond our control, if this election needs to be postponed, that should not happen just a postpartum, it, that the Supreme Court or the, any other authority or the election commission should agree to a due date. And then we all know when the election is going to happen. The uh, candidates especially, you know, I was a candidate, I know how difficult it is when the election is postponed mm -hmm. because then you are indefinitely running for the election. You know, in this country, the election this is the first time we are running an election under this campaign financing bill, which is a great victory for hmm. all of us. That is something we should talk about because that directly affects the democracy and, and the way the elections are conducted. But yes, the, the, our position is the election should happen. And uh, if that is to be postponed, because there is a matter in front of the judiciary now, hmm. we respect that also. And we respect the argument uh, brought forward by the bureaucracy that is beyond the political... Uh, uh, will, hmm. if that should be postponed, yes, there should be a, a date given, so everyone will be on the equal ground, equal footage for this election. Thank you very much, uh, Melinda Rajapaksha, Additional Director General, Department of Government Information. Of course, Melinda, you mentioned that the SLPP is in favour of the election. However, you all appear to be on the other side. We could have drawn a clear line uh, because we had invited a representative from the United National Party also to appear on our show. Uh, unfortunately, uh, this morning, uh, a representative of the party uh, contacted us and informed us uh, that uh, he cannot make it on the show today as permission has not been given for him to attend this program. However, uh, moving on, uh, we finally have attorney at law, J.M. Vijay Bandara, for your thoughts 
on today's topic. Yeah. Good evening to you all and thank you very much for having me. The topic is that the true meaning of democracy, the people's sovereignty and social contract. A topic which is lacking around us today that I have to clearly say. Thousands of words, words are spoken but conduct clearly say all are anti-democratic. Having said that, why we have to talk about true democracy, social contract and sovereignty? Let me comment by saying, for certain general laws, there are always exceptions, but we have to emphasize here no exception to the sovereignty. No exception to the sovereignty. Sovereignty is inalienable, cannot be restricted. All three government, organs of government must respect, secure and promote the objective of the state. So why there is a social contract? If you take a lease agreement, I just saw this, if somebody has this names and all not concerned, just this is a lease agreement. What is the lease agreement? Meaning is that landlord, a owner of a house, having the full power, giving away particular property, to a person called lessee with a restricted powers, who is the landlord we call. Exclusive owner is the owner of the property. That is a contract. When there is a contract, there is no room for arbitrariness. No room for women fancies. There are contract duties and liabilities and rights. That both parties are entitled. Then why? The constitution itself is a contract. It, preamble people say, beginning that lease agreement say landlord so and so says it. This preamble say, just look at this word, the people of Sri Lanka is the authority which has the power to declare and adopt the constitution. Then article 3 and 4 of the constitution very categorically says that sovereignty was with the people. Article 4 elaborate five elements of sovereignty. One is executive power, legislative power. These two functions are not direct democratical function. These are representative democratic elected people discharged on behalf of the people. Then servant is the ruler, the beneficiary and the lord is the people. That is executive and legislative power. Judiciary powers are exercised and discharged not by elected but appointed independent body court system. Then there are out of five powers, two powers are strictly, inherently vested only with the people. Those are not alienated. What are those powers? Franchise and fundamental rights. So sovereignty concept, it is not only philosophically, it is very simple condition. Five elements. This entire constitution talk about those five elements in five chapters. That is the meaning of the constitution. Constitution means reflection of the sovereignty. If constitution says Sri Lanka is a democratic society, we all are bound to respect democratic values. Now what is happening today, all the government institutions are in disarray. Countries in distress, distress, distress situation. And therefore, we don't see the rulers respect democracy. That is my opening remark. Thank you very much, Attorney at Law, J.M. Vitripandar. Of course, some valuable uh, comments made during the opening session. Of course, uh, we will grill you on these uh, viewpoints that you have uh, as the program progresses. Uh, introducing our journalist for this evening. On my right, as always, we've got uh, Shania Dedigama. Uh, thank you, Shania, for being on the show. And also on my left, we've got Jaimal Ratnayaka. So to start off today's show, Jaimal, I believe you have a question. Sure. Thank you, Shalan, and uh, very good evening to all our gentlemen of this elite panel. My first question, I feel uh, Melinda is best suited to uh, elaborate on my first question. Melinda, I want to speak to you about uh, the current government. So, in my personal view, I believe that there are two issues plaguing the current government. The first is uh, calls for it being illegitimate 
because uh, it was the, the, there's no mandate for the government to function and the second is uh, the lack of credibility so let's keep the legitimacy out of it and speak on the credibility part of it historically when governments made decisions we've seen that the people like uh, kusum rightly mentioned were left on the sidelines and the the elites uh, the political elites are the ones who made the decisions and there seems to be uh, over the years a breakdown in communication between the structures of governance and the people so especially at a time like this when there is an economic crisis an unprecedented economic crisis and politicians keep on coming forward and say that these are bitter pills that we have to swallow we have to tighten our belts uh, economic reforms are not going to be easy and what not but what they fail to do is to present a proper roadmap to the people and uh, come up with the proper communication strategy to tell the people we understand that we are in a tight spot but this is our plan for the future and this is what needs to be done therefore trust us and we will get you there but even in recent times we have seen that that communication has not happened let's take the imf deal yes i understand certain conditions even the governor of the central bank said that they have to maintain radio silence but even when it comes to the election okay funds were allocated uh, nominations were called and now there are certain snags there are certain obstacles so as the additional director of the da department of government information do you have any sort of plan to mend this gap uh, to bridge this gap and to create a proper strategy of communication to tell the people this is our way forward this is our plan this is where we will be, will be so trust us thank you that's a, that's a, that's a excellent <laughs> analysis of the very, very long question i'm sorry yeah, i apologize <laughs> i just i had to elaborate but it is an excellent analysis of the situation if you ask me uh, being a part of this political party and the government from the inception if you ask me what are the what went wrong that's a that's a question we keep asking uh, some of the points you highlighted in your elaboration yes some of these are very valid points uh, when we look back what went wrong and why some of these things happen those are the reasons mm. but there are things which has a context to why those things happen and how those things happen you know we mostly most of these cases we are now looking at through the uh, uh, different political lenses so we we forget the context why some of these things happen now the sri lankan society is a very political society from from i can't even recall a friend or a neighbor or someone who sat next to me when i was traveling from Uh, my home to colombo on a bus was sitting next to me who didn't talk about anything else other than politics mm. you know every conversation end up in politics in this in this country no matter whether you got into a, a, a mercedes benz driven by your friend or a tuk tuk from this borupana road mm. so we are that politically conscious so this is largely politically conscious society this society so everyone has a political opinion everyone when there is a economic crisis to a large extent everyone is a economist mm. but even in other times everyone is a, everyone has a very big involvement mm. it is not just an understanding it is an involvement in politics of this country now now if you look at the recent context let's come straight to the the question you ask the government always the previous when i said the previous government the government before the 9th of may the government always presented or talked about what they were going to do it is not that they didn't talk you know we all agree to a large extent we had a fantastic communication during the covid 19 it is not only the credit to the government but the bureaucracy the public service all the other stakeholders who worked around the government did the fantastic communication so we all came out from the communication also played a large role from morning to night from your tv channel to all the other newspapers to everyone else who got involved in communication of the government 
and the other stakeholders of managing COVID-19 did a fantastic communication. Yeah. So we all agree with that. So, but it is just an addition there. Um, there was a bit of miscommunication on the part of the Minister of Health. Uh, because uh, we saw not even the Minister of Health, uh, also the Speaker in Parliament, uh, we saw them uh, tasting and testing and, and promoting uh, untested solutions to the COVID-19 pandemic that resulted in people flocking in front of uh, this uh, person who called himself a doctor uh, and uh, demanding for this medicine, which increased. I mean, due credit no, yeah, to the yeah, government, yeah. due credit to all the public uh, officials, but also that part was solely done by politicians. Politicians were supposed to be responsible. The Minister of Health drank this. Milk. I agree. And I if agree. I also I agree. Add, I agree. I yeah. agree with that. It is not that, not that, uh, not that you are the first one who is telling me what went mm. wrong like mm. that in 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 that level of communication. I was one of the first to tell that within the government, mm. within our uh, level of influence that. This That's is wrong. not right. This okay. is, and we stop those things, you know. Mm. Now, in a, that kind of crisis, which we have never seen before, an unprecedented level of misinformation, disinformation, and also people genuinely trying to do different things. There were good intentions too in certain different things, politicians and ministers tries, which went wrong. You know, the intention was right. But now this is not the time to say, because the intention was right, that action is right. The action is right. You know, <laughs> I agree with that too. But everyone at that time tried to save their own lives, yeah. the loved one's lives, and others' lives too. Yes, I agree, but there were things went wrong. So, but COVID-19, I even wrote a big book and publish about the entire process of COVID-19, how government managed and mismanaged, what went right and what went wrong. So, there are... 50-50 everything, but 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 yes, we had the communication, and even when the economic crisis started hitting, mm. that happened right center of the right middle of the COVID-19, government started feeling the the economic hit, tried best to communicate that it is not that we didn't communicate. You know the communication was there, even the IMF discussion was there. I attended uh, at the very beginning when the IMF delegation came to Sri Lanka. This is the same notebook I'm still using. The previous year. Uh, 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 February, I was in uh, some of those meetings and we even put the press release out saying the delegation was here, the discussion was happening. But even to date, one simple question you all keep asking is the additional information, yeah. more information whether government can provide. I am not an expert to say that, but you all also agree that the from the central bank governor to treasury secretary who have been involved in these negotiations and discussions have told very clearly there are things we can say there are things we can't say and we all know from the central bank governor mm. to many other stakeholders who are responsible for these negotiations and these discussions have been coming to the media have been holding press conferences and even at the government information department at our place Every Tuesday, cabinet, uh, uh, no, cabinet announcement like prayers and all the other important topics, we bring whoever is responsible, whatever the possible way, we put them in front of camera. Mm. So the journalists have been having a fantastic opportunity in this country to ask questions. And yes, probably the English program like this in this country might be having a difficulty in getting some of the resource person, to be very honest. All our other singular programs, generally, we are in a position to get responsible minister or the other officials to a program. Mm. So, so I think to a large extent, communication is happening. It is not that government is not communicating. But there are things which are lacking, which I agree, like these things. Now, this is a very, as I said, this is a very politically conscious society. So, this is not a society, especially with what happened in the recent context where young people came out to the road fought for their rights some in right manner some in wrong way but young people in this country now are very politically conscious citizens so they are asking something beyond which the government mechanism gives them as information now even your question i like the i like uh, uh, one important word you mentioned which really the previous generation would ask where is the road map you know everyone would uh, have been asking for the the answers related to the 
the situation mm -hmm. but you ask where is the road map now now if you ask from the government still there is an answer the answer is president himself came to the parliament and explained what is his road map then the budget projection has been uh, presented so the other cabinet ministers have spoken in the parliament and told what are their ministries are going to do and even beyond that now you can see every week there is a circular coming out from the prime minister office or the president office or the or the or the public administration which is saying okay six percent budget cut again another five percent additional budget cut again saying okay from this month onward the salary will be paid in two days you know the, so these things have been communicated mm. but yes you are you, this generation is asking something beyond that you know yes all that good fine but mr president or the cabinet or the parliament tell us the road map in six months where we will be in one year where we will be even i saw the president has said in six months in generally where this is where we will be in one year this is where we will be but young people today want something more detail you know to plan your things to plan your business to plan your work to plan your wedding to you know everything has been affected so they are asking for much greater details i can see as a government official that is the now i have the other shoes too mm -hmm. you know as well. yeah so as a politician i would love to give that information mm -hmm. i would be in this side mm -hmm. because i know greater clarity and greater information makes politicians life also easy mm -hmm. i have realized that i mean i mean that side of the game but as a bureaucrat this is a system which we have been managing maintaining rebuilding re-repairing for 70 years now this government system public servants you know the way these institutions governments work which is not modernized or which is not ready the way you all are ready that is where this mismatch is it is not only the politicians who are to be blamed yes there is a bigger political layer uh, who probably don't understand some of the nitty-gritties you are asking but i know politicians being politicians who understand the people's pulse most of the time because that's their bread and butter to win the next election generally if i heard correct you asked what is the government stance uh, yes. what's the what's, plan for what's the, the future plan? let me add yesterday the Pudujana Permanent Secretary, Mr. Sagar Kari, was my head news saying that this government is not ours. Yes. What is this? He this said it's Radil Vikram Singh's government. government. No, there Why is no, is sir, sir, there is, is no discrepancy. He, himself, there is no he discrepancy. Is a, he, let me listen, he is a general secretary of the party. When he was posed a question by a journalist, he said this government is not ours. And now you raise the question, what the stance of government? If means you are answering the status of the government, you introduce yourself as a position of Paramuna. Hmm. Right? Then General Secretary says something else. This is the uncertainty that we are suffering. No, is, that, no, that no, no. This Milena, just to add to no, that, it's yeah. not only the General Secretary, yes. but I believe even the national organizer of the Sri Lanka Podujana Paramuna, the man who you credit for building the Sri Lanka Podujana Paramuna from the ground up, Basil Rajapaksa said uh, in his own words, make a peandu and a main. They are leasing yeah, out so cabinet ministers to somebody else then. No, now, 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 this, this is not the first time this country is having a mixed cabinet or mixed parliament or a mixed government. This is not the first time. JVP has been part of different governments. SLFP has been in different governments. People have been crossing the roads mm. uh, to, uh, you know, for different agendas. So this is not the first time this such government mm. is existing in this country, number one. But I have obligation, uh, while answering this question, mm. but since my question is towards the government, I have obligation since I am holding a government position yes. mm. to answer your question. So, sir, in that way, I answered the question. Mm. But if you are asking a different political question, I have a different answer, very much in alignment with the uh, Secretary General of the party, mm. because we are a massive coalition government. So, this is so not just, just SLPP. Just let, me, let, me, let me just put this in the into government. context so that so that our viewers can understand. So, you are saying. As a politician, as Milinda Rajapaksa, the politician, 
we are not part of the government right no but as no I, I didn't say that but so i will i, I will i will explain i will explain no, when, when you that put the there has to be there has to yeah. be some form yeah. of clarity yeah. Bilinda. now you yeah. said you said that as as a bureaucrat you have to withhold some information which i completely understand yeah. you can't go and tell us what taxes you're going to increase yeah. or what is going to increase next month because then we will buy and stock up on that yeah. okay yeah. so i'm not asking you and that will be another crisis there will be another crisis i'm not asking you those questions Bilinda. Bilinda, this is a simple thing that people need clarity on who is our government who, who who is a part of this government right so if i understood what you said you said that as as a bureaucrat there are there are certain positions that you have to hold or certain views that you oh, have more to hold. than that i have a responsibility to Re answer the responsibility question. that is what i said question. no that's understood but yeah. you said as a politician you're more inclined to the view of the general secretary so now let's get this straight the view of the general secretary is not wavering he is saying we are not part of this government ape andu aneme so according to what you're saying Milinda Rajapaksa, the bureaucrat, is that we are in the government, we have to give information, and we are giving information and acting accordingly. But Milinda Rajapaksa, the politician, is saying, no, I'm, agree I'm agreeing with the general secretary, we are not part of the government. Am I right? Yes. That not... As, the, as a party, yeah, that is as a, as a party. party. As a party, not as Melinda <laughs> Rajapaksha. <laughs> Melinda Rajapaksha is not in the parliament. Melinda Rajapaksha is not in the parliament. So, to you, make that statement. So you don't have to raise your hand if there's anything you want to add. Sorry, I just want no, to but, 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 but before that, I need to clarify this. No? Okay. But, but uh, 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 Vijay Bandar uh, said it is not the first time Mr. Sagar Akariyavasam, as the Secretary General, made this statement. Yeah. And as you very clearly, very rightly said, even the national organizer and many other senior politicians of this party has said, we are not the government. Yeah. They have said very clearly. No, we are not. Yeah. We have, a, we have a president okay. from a different political party. Mm -hmm. When he was contested for the president position yes. in the parliament, mm -hmm. there was another candidate who was also from Your SLPP politics. at that time. Yes. But the majority of SLPP at that time decided to support UNP uh, leader Mr. Ranil Vikramasinghe. So is it ethical for them to then say that they are not part of the government? No, why, 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 they, are, if, why they can't support someone getting elected as no, the no, president no. and then say Yes, we elected the president. Now, president has to play the president roles, uh. and there are different roles we can play, and we will play those different roles. Why they can't say that? Milinda, what, what is the what is the wrong with that? One second, Milinda. Now you yeah. say you say what is the wrong with as that? As a politician, you are for the election. Yes, you hundred percent. Your party holds one thirty four more MPs, and parliament yes. is the only authority who can allocate. Why can't you pass a resolution allocating this money? Sir, no, no, will no, you no vote, sir. Will sir, you no. at least bring a motion in parliament? to say that your party won't the election. Sir, now show, not words, so by conduct, I'm not saying to you, I have due respect to you, but I'm addressing those 134 more people, bring a motion and show that you are bona fide. Say that you are agreeable to allocate money. Sir, then now, let the other party, yeah, your sir, president, now, to negotiate. Yeah, but sir, you haven't shown by conduct that you are up to the true democracy. No, sir, now you, you being a lawyer and knowing the judiciary system of this country, is that a possibility next Monday morning or are we not running? Aren't we, are, are we not running the due process of this country to have election? There was a matter in front of the judiciary and which was taken up, decision was given and there is another matter which is taken up tomorrow and so there is a matter in front of the judiciary. So why someone has to run to the parliament, bring a motion tomorrow? So this, let's let's wait till the matter finished tomorrow. Mr. Silva, I'm eager to know your stance yeah, on the matter. I was listening to uh, all these uh, conversations, <laughs> but uh, I don't know, Mr. Vijay Bandar uh, was there in 2017. These things happen in 2017 again thereafter also. And you can remember what happened to uh, uh, this government where the Ranil Vikramasinghe and the uh, president was crashing mm. and they were silent in the parliament. They were never wanted to have the elections with regard to this. We can't go with this government. We'll have election. They never passed a resolution like that. Whether they have the uh, they have the power to do it. That is what, what they were doing at that point. What I'm saying is, those are people called politicians. Because of them only we are suffering. <laughs> 
that is why I say now the president is there. Hmm. He was elected by the parliament. He too is a politician. No, that's a different man. He is an experienced politician. Now he is doing something. That is why. Yeah. Now Malima, Malima can't agree. Now how why Malima? You, you say that we are just talking governors. Who no. are the part of the stakeholders of government? The government. Who, people who are, are yeah, talking I, I about do. people about the various things yes, don't should come out with clean history. hands. We are right now. I am not saying that we if have they, today. If they want to come out with that, I don't will go not say anything. No, no. What I am saying is Malima was silent with regard to some aspect when there is anything to be done. So, but only thing. At this stage, as he saying, quite so. correctly pointed out, the president has clearly stated mm. what we are going to do. Mm. So I don't know whether they, they are you are Silva, Now, when you say the president has clearly stated yeah. what we are going to do, that's that's subjective. Yeah. No, no, no. He has clearly <laughs> stated and with the approval of the cabinet. Mm. That is how uh, the country should run. The country should not listen to the various other political parties if they are not coming out with good uh, good uh, ideas. Yeah. No, yeah. 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 to connect uh, your question. In your question, Jaimal, you talked about the you used the word governance and um, my colleague Mr. Rajapaks talked about the word context. Mm. Now, I want to just link governance as a concept mm. with what we're talking about today, democracy. Now, democracy isn't just about elections, right? It's about a system. Yes. Democratic system or democracy has systems mm. within it, yes. right? Governance is a part of, that's of those systems. Mm. Now, a lot of people, I think, not just me, a lot of people have pointed out that our country collapsed because of a governance deficit as much as the policy agree now if we can just go into the the context mm. he talked about the context of of the recent policies right so i'm struggling to understand what was the context for the tax cuts of the Gotthard Bay Rajapaks administration. In 2019. What was the context for the agricultural policy? The, the, the sudden What was uh, the context ban. for the anti-IMF rhetoric? But if okay? you want, there are context. And also, I, 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 whether I, you I agree like to or that. not is a different matter. But I, I also want to point out, <laughs> uh, let's notice the governance deficit. Okay, let's look at the political appointments. Mm. Uh, Dr. P. V. Jayasundra uh, gave an undertaking to the Supreme Court somewhere in 2010 uh, that he would not take up any uh, government public positions. government positions. The president overruled that. Is that mm. democratic? I, I say no. Kusum, I think it, no. it's important to understand why he gave an undertaking also. Yeah, I mean, there was a, there was a shipping, uh, I think it was something to do with the port, the, hmm. the West Container Terminal in 2008. And there was also a private sector entity involved in that. Hmm. Now, let's put that to one side. That's one person, uh, Dr. P.B. Jason, a very powerful person in, in, the, in the previous government. Hmm. Uh, Mr. Ajit Nivad Cabral. Mr. Ajit Nivad Cabral was a former central bank governor. Clearly a political instrument, a political entity went to parliament, sat on the side of the government benches, okay? Became made the political speeches, again, became then a state went, finance back, minister. went back to sit as the head of the central yes. bank. That doesn't happen in, in a country that has real governance system. That is a pure political appointment of someone that is a political instrument and a political actor. Mm. And uh, you can mention other people that were members of the monetary board. The monetary board of the central bank is one of the most important institutions in Sri Lanka's economic management. Who were the members of the monetary board? There were, there were members of the monetary board that are not economists. There were members of the monetary board that were simply appointed because they were friends of government, because they may have been connected to donors. This is part of the governance issue. And I think, to, let's face it, right? The president is from the UNP. The UNP was decimated at the last election. Would they want another election? No. The board is responsible for where we are right now. Would they logically want another election? No. So we can talk about the legality, we can talk about uh, reporting lines, information, you can talk about all these things, the context, all that. The fact of the matter is the people with the levers of power are the exact people that you would expect not to want an election. And it just so happens, surprise, surprise, that it seems the elections are going to be so postponed. From, from, no, but from there was a wrong, one wrong information mm. that P.B. Jayasundar was not cleared by the president. After he was invited back by the president. No, no, it and was... Supreme no, Court said no, they can't open. No, no, this is completely wrong. P.B. Jayasundar, I don't know whether any of you remember, when the P.B. Jayasundar's case happened, he was again cleared by the court. Yes, then there he was a came and served. Five. Then, yeah, then yeah. he came and served. Yeah. Sir, yeah. Sir, yeah. the previous government. So you are defending yeah. the appointments of. Uh, no, no, I'm not. Uh, no, I'm no, giving no, the facts. I'm giving the facts. You are defending the appointments. No, 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 I have to give the facts. We can't. We can't defend it. No, I'm not defending. I'm giving facts. What has happened in court? 
then what happened election commission came and election commission the 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 finance ministry said finance ministry presented the difficulties of financing mm. right yeah. that is a bureaucratic problem is that no, not a no, it is a bit constitutional problem okay it is finance, a, okay secretary okay. of okay. ministry of finance are under the commission of election okay. once the election is okay. declared okay right okay it's, it's a contempt right. of okay. the okay. Okay. no no but but this this, this is a very yeah. important matter yes. okay he is so under the election okay. commission during the ஒரேஷன் but now what is ideally or correctly should happen is election commission going back to the supreme court isn't that the right uh, way of happening so no, no, the right ah, or wrong ha ah, so yes, compared to do file the motion yes, ah, so, and that is why so let the let, so let the let the let the judiciary That's do what intervene he said. no no let, let me so let the judiciary do intervene now, now, why 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 monday we all watch news <laughs> yesterday we watch news over you know, president himself It's a media all jab at the Supreme it's a, Court. Yeah, it's a media <laughs> statement. I didn't hear exact word from President's mouth, but what was told that there are 17 judges in Supreme Court. That is utterly undesirable, and it is totally against the constitutional cons- uh, conventions. Right? Mm. He commented that can Supreme Court judges resolve economic problem? Nobody expects Supreme Court to resolve economic problem, right? And being the head of the state, elected or selected, that I don't know. but he shouldn't have make that comment that is in road of the independence of judiciary that was okay. i think has a yes mr deserva and melinda maybe you can add to this as well so in your opening statement i was kind of waiting for about an hour to ask you this now <laughs> um you spoke about the cost right the stance of the government now is we're delaying because of cost issues and i think you kind of mentioned that it's not about the cost of actually holding it's also post election cost right you know government officials need to be accommodated and all these things now i recently saw a tweet maybe about 2 days ago uh, mr basu rajapaksha is getting down from a vehicle um, at a particular location and the comment under the tweet is uh, the president is saying there's no funding for an election but bodyguards can be paid for all these backup vehicles can be paid for so i mean w- how can you expect the public to sort of swallow that pill when they are exposed to you know where tax payer money is actually going that is why i told you the first thing sir the politicians have done the blunder and they have ruined it that's a different matter we can't blame them and wait 
we have to go forward so that is why we have selected imf is the institution that can help us and they are also imf have given the government 15 points and out of those 15 points 14 points were fulfilled up to uh, 15th of february only the electricity problem was there that is also by increasing that they have fulfilled it and they have sent it to the imf that we have fulfilled all the obligations you have put forward and now we are waiting your result that is what we are expecting at this juncture right so then we after that only we can go forward not only imf people will say what is this amount this is small amount they are giving us billion. No, apart from that the world bank is ready to give us mm -hmm. and then uh, uh, asian development adb so those are the people and furthermore other institutions also will realize that imf have recognized mm -hmm. our way of conducting uh, the situation and they are also coming forward Mr. Isimba, based on yeah. what you said uh, you you spoke about the 15 conditions the imf yeah. put forward right but I'm no economic expert, but in my uh, personal view, I feel like the government is just hastily going about trying to tick all of the boxes to unlock the IMF deal, especially at a time when we are facing an uh, economic that, that crisis. Perfectly right, because we have to adhere to their... So then how will uh, the people survive? No, that's no, not they, 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 no, no. We, if we are If we are not going to adhere to that... No, we, are not, we, we, are not, we are not compelled to adhere. No, mm. We that, are compelled to adhere governor. to this so. particular set of conditions because we have negotiated these yes. conditions yes. with the IMF. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Nishan Dimel in the Sunday morning newspaper just this Sunday talked mm. about how it's he, as far as he's an economist, he's mm. the executive director of Verity Research. Exactly. He said that the governments have the ability to negotiate with the IMF. Mm. In fact, the IMF asked the government to give them their own set of recommendations. Yes. And then you work around that. It mm. seems here that there is clearly a, a center right economic uh, dogmatism that lies with Ranil Vikram Singh and the UNP. Mm. And it just so happens to coincide perfectly with the general policy orthodoxy of the IMF. Yes. So that's a separate matter. Mm. But to get back to our discussion, uh, a, an election is just about, if it's about money, then that means it's about the desire to hold an election or the priorities mm. of this government, mm. right? The fact of the matter is, uh, if you can prioritize or if you have a desire to have a big Independence Day celebration, if you can have extra policemen for mm. politicians, if you can build new houses, um, this is essentially a hostage situation, right? We were held under hostage as a people when the, when the economy crashed. Uh, Gautab Rajvaksa didn't resign. Mm. He waited until things got so bad in the country that there were thousands of people on the streets. There was widespread damage to public property. He yes. kept hold of position until then, didn't have the decency to resign. Fine. I want to take us back, I'm sure the older people on this panel will remember. It's a simple fact of history that in Sri Lanka, especially delaying uh, elections, manipulating the holding of an election for any reason, but especially for these narrow political reasons, has caused huge uh, damage and destruction to our country. Mm. Uh, the United Front government of 1975 extended the term uh, by two years. The UNP of 1977 uh, went for a full term with a referendum. It ended up in protracted violence, conflict, so arbitrary acts of political man manipulation have led to disastrous effect effects, social costs, economic costs for this country. It's happened before. So I would say at least to the gentlemen on the panel, a free and fair election, a democratic election is, is like a pressure valve. You know, if you can release the pressure valve, it might make it easier for the government. Yeah. It might even be better for them if they uh, just Kusum, have this can you can you speak to the fact that I mean, would you say that a lack of legitimacy could in fact damage investor relations, damage investor confidence and perhaps even impede some of the negotiations with say ADB, the World Bank and the IMF? And whether fact. you're lending money to a country, whether you're doing business investing in a country, whether you're visiting the country as a tourist, it's about stability, right? It's about having some understanding and some belief and some trust in that country. Now, I personally would not want to travel to some parts of South Africa, for instance. Mm. Okay, why? I'm scared. I just see the stuff on the media. I just don't want to go there. It's the same thing that's happening with Sri Lanka. And the people in Sri Lanka are daily, if you watch the news, anyone can watch the news, right? And they can see the protests against this government. It, it's not something that's happening in a small pocket here and a small pocket there. It's island-wide, right? It's not reached the, the levels of the Aragale from earlier last year, but it's there. So in such a situation, I think it's a bit ridiculous that we are, for one thing, we are expecting proceeds from tourism, right? Now, 
our main tourist originating markets, Western Europe, Russia, etc., they're all in recessions. Okay? Uh, check the prices of tickets. They've gone up 50, 75, or 100 percent. Okay, so we are still expecting those same tourists to come to Sri Lanka? No. The fact of the matter is, we are going to make up some extra money from the Indian tourism, mm. uh, maybe Chinese tourism. If tourism is our way out, we're going to be waiting another two or three years because these are extremely short term, it's extremely dependent on many other things. Except so the factors. Mm. It's, yes, so the fact of the matter is that this government doesn't have much of a mandate, doesn't have much of any legitimacy, it doesn't even seem to be having a plan. No, so, now, Kusum, when you say this government, what I can't understand is, uh, Mr. De Silva, you said that, uh, you know, the plan of the president is clear. But judging by the statements of even Mr. Rajapaksa With here, the approval of the cabinet. Yes, with the approval that of the cabinet. That is the constitutional but reform. A but cabinet that doesn't have legitimacy. Yes, yes. no legitimacy. That, that's, that's a borrowed cabinet. It's opinion. That's not opinion. That is opinion. I'm sorry, how come that is a fact? Can I answer that? But how come that is a fact? How come that is a fact? Yes, it is higher No, no, but if you know how come that is a fact? If you're telling me that a country can have inflation of 70%, food inflation of 100%, have multiple institutions collapse, have governance collapse, and you're telling me that that government still has legitimacy? I think you need to check the meaning of the word legitimacy. I'm sorry, that's just a fact. I, I think Mr. Vijay Bandar also... Yes. Now, the, when it's come directly come to the matter of election, now, <coughs> election commission is the sole authority mm. to conduct... No, but Mr. Vijay Bandar, if you can first answer first. Melinda's question yes. on... Uh, Melinda challenged you yes. to say, why this government does not have legitimacy mm. and then we can go to Melinda's yeah. answer and uh, Mr. De Silva's answer and we can solve this forward, yeah. yes, we don't know who's no, government, the government, government, government I ask why the cabinet doesn't have a legitimacy, legitimacy. Yes, right. yes. to yes. make those decisions exactly. that's, okay. the, that's, that's the right, right. question yes, yes. yes that's make me clear now constitution provides mm. an independent election commission we don't have to argue about that that is there once the election is declared, which is the mandate of the commission, up to the conclusion of the election, entire police, department, ministries, secretaries, entire government mechanism comes under the election commission for the purpose of the election. Mm. And also president being the head of the armed forces. Election commission can write to president. These are constitution provisions, right. very clear. Recommending the that armed person's requirements for a particular purpose for the election. Then, who can take decision? It is solely and absolutely only the election commission. What is the cabinet then? What is the role of the cabinet? Cabinet is comprised of whom? Elected members, mm. elected representative of a particular party or independent group. Then. It's like cricket match between two countries umpiring by one country, playing country. Cabinet is a collection of politicians. They are the people whose parties are contesting at the election. Perhaps make already given nomination. Mm. How can they take decision? That is what we call lack of governance. But no Mr. Vijay Bandara, in, in August or September 2019, the people voted these people into that parliament. That is not the issue. Voted or not, according to the constitution, once the election is declared mm. and election process is set in motion, right. then cabinet has no mandate to take decision that impact conducting of the election. Mm. They say cut off 5%, 6%. Right. During the process of the election, cabinet has no legitimacy, legal mandate. So why this is... If you can will show this be me challenged at the Supreme the Court? Wait, no, no, I'm just asking wait, to... Wait, to wait. My... It will be challenged by even by tomorrow, I don't know. It can happen, but... No, but it MPP is, can is challenge it, that. It is that 100 right. illegitimate for the cabinet to interfere with the affairs of election commission. Mm. Because cabinet of ministers <coughs> are not independent body. It is not appointed authority. It comprises of elected, elected by parties. Parties are the one who contesting election. But I, I, I also subscribe to what Milinda said. Yes. Why hasn't the NPP or any other opposition party gone and challenged this? Challenge this, that is why it I'm... It will asking. happen because still they have expectation, they will soon have the election. That is the sense because of I think the people Bilinda, at the until, moment. until about two two days ago, yes. everybody were under the impression that the that election, election is going to be held on the 9th of March. one week ago, but still they expect. 
more than anyone else, mm -hmm. I was under that impression. Mm -hmm. I came to this program after traveling to 20 districts, mm -hmm. speaking in 20 different meetings of our party, mm -hmm. preparing our candidates for the election. Mm -hmm. So then I would have not done that, spending 800 kilometers going from district to district our party doing these rallies mm. if we were not uh, expecting anyone to suddenly come out from somewhere and cancel the election we were also expecting the election to have even at this moment we are respecting the supreme court uh, and uh, expecting the decision tomorrow but, but again that, that, now, that's the same situation in that way we, we, are we started court. this discussion from the initial question that jamal posed regarding the communication of information mm. now, as far as the discussion has progressed what at least i understood is i don't know maybe the viewers would have understood something better but we are unsure who is governing us we are unsure who is in government is it the unp is it Randall vikram missing her alone is he in in, in alliance with the, the SLPP, SLPP. Mm. or are there are the small parties involved in this we don't know. Charlotte, uh, may I say this? Yes. Now, it is very clear. You have to understand. We have to abide by the constitution. Okay. Constitution provides the country to be run by the president and the cabinet of ministers. Whether they have been appointed somewhere else or is a different matter. Mm. It, they can be uh, rejected uh, in a, at a later stage. At an but election. At an election. At That's election. right. So, so at this stage, no, election. at election means. Don't say that there because election will be if it is if this election is a parliamentary election, mm -hmm. then you can say that mm -hmm. if it is the local government, local election. government, nothing will happen. Right? Oh, that that is why I am saying this is only to say that we have won this and we have contested no, and we have the money. Yeah, that's the right. Say, no, that, that's that's right. People actually. should be Where educated. We yeah. are we are here to educate them and say, wait, this is not the time to have this particular I thing that we have, people have been very educated by the policy no no, 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 no also it's also not yeah. it's also not up to the government to decide what election is important exactly. and what election is not, not important. important at this if juncture, the election is what i'm due, saying is yeah. what i'm saying is you are, you are quite clearly say that i am in agreement with that but only thing at this juncture whether we are going to have this election with this cost now yeah. i will tell you this now see the government has clearly stated the total income uh, government revenue is 173 billion expenditure after what is the expenditure salaries pensions and subsidies 193 million that's billion. the definition billion. 110 billion billion and then advanced expenditure uh, additional expenditure 23 billion and domestic and foreign uh, uh, interest. Debt, debt interest interest 508 billion hmm. so uh, all these together there is a deficit of 554 billion hmm. so are we going to say that we don't want these things to happen we don't want any salaries pension and other things to be paid we want the election that is not there mr saying. Diselma, what can you do with 10 billion no, 10 now, billion. now that also, we are, are we saying that we are waiting for our financial position to improve before we have an election because it doesn't seem like that's going to be that's going to take some time no, so we'll just have to but i guess that is why we say that and mr Diselma, you sorry. said you said in in the start you said that the constitution has to be followed unless there's an exception but then now how long will that ex ex exception be exploited that's correct perfect right that that is why he said in 2017 also this has happened and then parliamentary election parliamentary election was postponed because of covid situation mm. that can be happen but indefinitely you can't postpone it mm. that's why they say million the quite correctly said that yes tomorrow or another day they should say this on this particular day we are going to have the election so we have now they are expecting money to come they have stated that it is very clear uh, charlotte that they have stated in uh, their uh, foreign remittances has gone up 68.8 percent hmm. right so it, there is an increase and then as he said that tourism we are relying on that we have no other option we have to rely on whether the european tourists are coming or not is a different matter we are expecting some money to be there and then you know that when we are spending uh, things to the foreign countries that is exports 
they they are not bringing all these monies to uh, the sri lankan uh, country so they are a ways of getting those things they have to explain we have to explain them you send these things that is how the remittances have gone up so people some people they have said not to send remittances to the country no, because the, the president is, no, no, no no that is why this financial crisis is there so we are trying to do something mm. so why can't we wait for another 3 4 months and see you can wait bring so you can even not buy the reforms they have to buy some say and the people no now what they Should say is no because of this reform. this uh, this election they will gain everything Who no that know? is not Who happening not so they are not happening they we don't some, know how some politician it is not political exercise of this panchayat they will come and they will come and shout we have won the so various we, 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 people shout that's, that's, that's all though. that's all will happen no, the country will not gain anything How that is we, we, are, we are concerned about okay. the country so mr this is the same way the same way they are postponing no, think, this election I mean, they might postpone and uh, that is, the that parliament is prediction, no. they might don't yes, do that but it no, could no. happen it has happened in the past it might happen again no, no, no. It, if it is there then, then people people will realize that they are not because if they if they know that the that the system is not air tight they might be compelled they to are, they, are, they might be that is not correct okay way of but so might but, is uh, the yes I'm or no it could happen what i am saying we i will say mm. uh, going further the president will think that i will have parliamentary election instead of this mm. why i should pay i spend this money to the uh, local government he can decide that where the constitution <laughs> provide provision to select choose among the election when election is due show me any section of the constitution that he can elect he has a discretion to select the election at this stage at any the point dissolution of parliament that's, that's what i'm telling you but, but dissolution but, of parliament mm. is what i'm that's telling you we are on local government election. now the time has come mm. and the constitutional power is given to the president mm. to dissolve the government mm. uh, so the, if he is willing to do that they can do that mm. and if furthermore if he wishes he can go for a presidential election mm. so those things are there mm. we can't predict for that but the fact remains at this juncture whether we are asking a genuine question of asking the uh, election no this is not genuine mm. we what we want is to show that we are for the people and we are asking for election to pay, gain, gain something mm. what they gain they will gain only people 8000 or people will be elected they should be looked after by the government mm. So they I are not saying anything. I would contend that this is the period where we need to strengthen the local governments because this is where the I, rural I am people there. I am hundred percent in agreement. I am hundred percent in agreement with my learned friend view so because uh, I personally view mm. local government is the mm. important yeah. factor in a, in a country mm. because if you go to the British mm. British uh, system, mm. we have come across lot of cases. Mm. as far as the uh, local governments are con mm. concerned because they have the problem mm. they are solving it and it is very important to run country mm. local government election but at this stage mm. they are not changed in it so if we have a good background platform mm. we can have the, we have to have mm. my personal view we have to have local government election but at this stage we should not have because we are we are suffering and we have to pay a lot of things inconvenient for the ruling party and the president to have an election so no so this this is how do you think that argument is going to go down with the public what do you think the potential outcome of i don't think of, it matters what the public thinks right yeah at the end of the day the public i mean how do you think the uh, how do you think it doesn't the matter what the public, public thinks the public are stupid whether right? we are doing a they don't know what they're not. doing genuine so, It doesn't, doesn't matter. Thing or not, the, the, the thing that we have it only matters answer. what the UNP and the Bhutto think. I mean, I do matter. you think it will lead to some kind of outbreak again? How do you think they will respond to this argument that you are making, supposing People, the election is indefinitely postponed? That is what I am saying. Indefinitely, not indefinitely. You yeah, can't. Postpone. You can't do. You can't do that. No one can postpone indefinitely. Tomorrow, we the can court see has it. to get an agreement from the election That's commission. Right, yeah. If That's there the is a right. if there is a problem, when are you going to ah, have the election? Right. So, so if if the postpone, if if the election is going to postpone, there still there will be a date, and we are very clear about that. What we are saying is, if supreme court decides to support the the postponement of the election mm. what we are saying as slpp if that happens we are up to supreme court mm. vision up to supreme court we will respect that mm. if they ask to have the election on 9 we are ready mm. we will have our mechanism from tomorrow to lose or win 
we have won elections, we have lost elections, we have gone through all that from my university time being a student politician, we have won elections, we have lost elections, that is part of being in politics. Mm. But that is not the matter. If the Supreme Court decides, not anyone else, mm. we are respecting the constitution and, 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 and the legitimacy of all these work. If the Supreme Court decides to postpone the election, but SLPP is saying very clearly, then there should be a date. Mm. Because not only for us, even to NPP, which is uh, Vijay Bandarasa is supporting, they have to plan uh, their election plans. And SJB has so, to plan their election uh, So, so Mirinda, Mirinda, my question to you is, why wait until the election is announced? Because this is extremely unfair by the general public, by the candidates who are contesting. Um, I even saw uh, a candidate whose uh, nomination was rejected, mm. taking off his clothes yeah. because he was like, was very he was, he was disappointed. He was, yes, he deposited his money and then it was rejected. So he was he was in disarray. Uh, why wait until the election was announced? Uh, so you're from the government information department. When did the government realize? Uh, because the government was they allocated 10 billion at the budget. I understand that's just an allocation. It's an estimate, but. Could you point out and tell me, at what point of time did the government realize, oops, we don't have money for the election? That is the time where the uh, Secretary to the Minister of Finance went to the uh, uh, Supreme Court and uh, submitted the... Uh, at that point? At so that, before that, the government didn't know? You, you, uh, you put the correct word, it's expectation. So, legitimate expectation was there. They were begging to get money. But if the money is not coming and we, so, they have other commitments, what else do they can uh, do? I mean, Mr. Lisilva, Mr. Lisilva, you said that the, the plan of the president is clear, but if there is such a lack of communication no. within the ranks of government, I mean, the implementation I'm of the sure plan they should is should be able to forecast this question. Entire. And you are right to forecast. Mr. Lisilva, you don't If Mr. Lisilva say, the time is the fact is that secretary informs the supreme that's the time then why did president himself say the moment when we were talking about nominating a date for the he said that i am there and i got a mandate not to have the election but to do something for the country i don't know in his mind he has made that decision one month ago now but this is the say but is the affidavit of the secretary of the Ministry of Finance. But what, 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 what I'm at all by is, is, is the fact that is, is this how the government functions? If they are so the dysfunctional, how can we expect them to steer us out of the Supreme Court and gives an affidavit saying we don't have money for the election? I mean, either the government is in extreme disarray mm. or they are so unconcerned about the election that uh, only when it comes up at the Supreme Court and the Treasury mm. Secretary to the Treasury goes and gives an affidavit, they're like, oh, really? Wait, wait, we don't, we don't have, have money, money for the election? So and you believe expecting, it? you must understand this is money, of course, if they have the money and don't tell, give in the money, it's a different matter. We are not in agreement with that. But sum. Mr. De Silva, but just you, uh, uh, right after those uh, affidavits were given, mm. let's forget the Independence Day celebration. Why did they have a Jana Raja Perhara 70, uh, 30 years after the last one was held spending 75 million or so? Totally uh, wrong e Exactly thing. so. so that, that is the I mean, we are not <laughs> there has to be in favour of the government. But yes, I understand. But there has to be a similar done. stance for no, a so, But So they are, they are not doing the correct way, as you said. The uh, uh, ex uh, spending a lot of money to the independent mm. and the uh, Perehara yes. also, they, they, we should comment on that and we should say it's wrong, mm. totally wrong on that. But the fact remains, mm. they have they, those things have been done. Mm. They, we are not going to safeguard the government with regard to that. But the present position in this country, we are concerned about the electricity mm. and the water and then uh, the petrol and all these essential things. Mm. Are we going to suffer by spending money? Not only the child who asked them, there's a small amount of money to have the election. Mm. That's a different matter. But when we appointed these things, they have and to we pay. said we have to, you wait till we solve the gum, uh, other things. No, you can't do that. It should be run in that proper way. That is why we say we will collect some money mm. and then thereafter we go for this particular election. It is quite correctly stated that uh, these local government elections are very essential mm. to run a proper country. Okay, Mr. De Silva, let's say, let's say I subscribe to your opinion on, on this is definitely not the time to hold a local government election. Okay, so as far as the sovereignty of the people goes in, in going and voting, the franchise, mm. that is restricted to a certain degree. 
and you also said that you agree that this government is wasting money when it comes to organizing uh, a flamboyant Independence Day celebration. Yes. No one was against <laughs> celebrating Independence Day. We could have celebrated in our own little way, but we had to spend 200 million uh, uh, Sri Lankan rupees on that. Then uh, the Janaraj Japera had again another 75 million or so. So you are in agreement that these are all unwanted expenses. Unwanted so, expenses. So, just think of and them. furthermore, Charles, sorry to disturb yes. you, they are not collecting the due things also. We are, well, they are also I'm losing money. They, you had a report a few days ago on uh, News First where um, the crude, crude oil shipments of yes. crude oil yes. 700 million, 700 million yes. rupees. And it's repaying. Yes. Now Gross they, negligence. They do, c c complete <laughs> in agreement with that. They, that is the negligence part of the government All the more reason to change the government. Yes. <laughs> no. That's perfectly right. Perfectly right. To change the government. Local something came to my mind because in 2018 we had the same yeah. same debate. Yeah. Discourse, yeah. I was in the seat uh, where uh, Vijay Bandarasa is sitting now. Uh, we were arguing so much to have the election in 2018. Mm. Uh, I don't know which side you were in at that time, <laughs> sir. Uh, in fact, you had the election. Yeah. And <laughs> in, uh, in fact, we had the election after so much of fight, so much fighting and on the road an and everywhere also, no? You agree that that election had a serious impact mm. to the next election? But that is, no, no, but say, sir, local government election nah, has sir, no impact. Sir, sir, I'm completely uh, against so that. Is, sir, sir, I'm completely <laughs> against that. Which one no, is correct? No, I don't agree with that. In 2018 election, mm. where we elect, got elected as the council members, mm. it didn't change anything in the government. It changed the political, it changed the political ah, climate. Oh, it changed the political climate outside. You, me, we know <laughs> this game. Want, please. If you want that, it's, yeah, then that you will happen. I agree, that, that will ah. happen. But not a single bit of the government changed. Change. And we didn't also push further. Now, as Mr. Andrukumar Desanayaka very clearly promised, if you give us, if you vote us in this election, mm. within one month, we will bring the general election. Okay. But in our fight in 2018, we didn't use a single word like that because, like today, even at that time, we respected all these words what you are mentioning now. The constitution, constitution yes. the franchise, but not the today. people's uh, power. But not no, today. like today, uh, the, the same happened that day. This constitution and, and was there. Yeah, uh. so don't misinterpret this. Uh, uh. Even that day when we won the local council election, we rightly waited till the right time for all the other elections. Sorry, but that's we didn't a bring any other elections this forward. Is one, this oh, one oh, point, oh, I didn't oh, want oh. to interrupt you in the middle. You said after winning the local government election that the political climate changed and you all didn't push any further <laughs> to change government. Uh, Belinda, that is factually true. incorrect yeah. because 2018 towards the end, mm. you all overthrew the government, yeah. had the president sack his own prime minister and cabinet and, and a constitutional coup. No, no, no that, is, that is complete. No, don't link that with that yes, incident. I, How can you not? No, that no, that is not the you election. Said won the, you said the Sri Lanka no, Kodujana Peramuna won the local government election and yeah. we did not push any further. And remember yeah. that Mahindra Rajapaksa couldn't show a majority in parliament there. Yes. Mm. No, 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 no. Now you are, are missing, no you, you are mixing two different no, things. No, we have two fantastic lawyers here. We will discuss about this because I think that is a missing interpretation. What I no, said, but what, uh, no, in 2018, when we had the local council election, mm -hmm. when we won the local council election, mm -hmm. okay. we never promised to bring forward general election or the presidential election. Those elections happen on time, which we all agree. But yes, as you mentioned, there was a constitution coup. Yes, which was wrong. Supreme Court decided it was wrong and it was, it was completely overthrown. Right. right, but the repercussions right. from that constitution right. cool that, that didn't happen thing. because of the that didn't happen because we won the 2018 election in the local council that was done by the president at that time Maitri Palasi Risena and the Supreme Court decided that was constitutionally wrong. Oh, the destability yes. caused by the constitutional coup. So you're saying, led you're to saying the Sri Lanka Pudujana Peramuna had no part to play in okay. that after the public. In, in I mean, what? I mean, in what? I mean, in what? In, in, in the 52-day government, you're saying it's the fault of the president. The president misread the law. So he when the president says... Not, I don't think he misread the law. Mm. I am sure the people who advised him mm. misinterpreted the law to s make it suitable to their agenda at that time. Which Supreme Court said no. wrong. So, why, so, why so that's the part of the why did Mahindra Rajapaksa and the SLP go forward? Mahindra Rajapaksa not to accept that. 
judging by what you said before mm. you you said that um, election should happen but right now we can't have it because we don't have money right then you also said that the government is spending lavishly on things that they should not spend on they're also not collecting income tax properly that, that's you what i'm telling yes. you yes and apart so, from that so my customs question, also customs also. duties also mm. all right yeah. Yeah. income so mr de silva mr de silva just just imagine imagine one of our viewers who are seated at home right they are not in your position mm. they are not advisor to the ministry of uh, justice uh, neither are they uh, an additional director general of the government uh, information department they're just a normal citizen sitting there right having their living standards drop from you know oh, i don't know how much mm. right some people they can't even afford their meals i don't need to uh, you know appraise you on the on the severity of the issue but a person who is seated there and sees all of this and is just angry right what can they do they can't vote right they can't protest yeah they can't protest they will get you know pulled in by the cops yes. or they will be tear uh, gas yeah, 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 water cannon so mr de silva my my question is very simple hmm. what can a person who is angry with what the government is now you are coming here and you are you are you are saying that the government is doing this wrong you're angry what can a person who is at home do they can't vote they can't protest what can they what is that choice so the by voting if they are in a position to change this unnecessary spending people and being the so called genuine people certainly i am there how do so we can't now can't, prediction no I mean, I mean, what is it's the, not what, me, my my learner okay. should know the law the, the local government is ready to change as he said correctly four to a one majority of the country is vote and then what happened next the government went on and then at the correct point it was dissolved likewise now the president has the power to dissolve we'll wait and see that we are not going to predict that so local government is not the he uh, we by spending money for local government i am concerned about that spending but the if, money. The, if they are ready if the president says i am going to spend the money by asking various uh, uh, people to change this situation that is the parliament election i think people will see uh, they are he is doing something now local government of course we must tell the people please wait and see we will provide that in due course and as he said quite correctly we must have a, an agenda and we must know the exact time Six months or three months or more than that. But Mr. De Silva, yeah, I think Kusum Kusum be... had Kusum had. Uh, yeah, uh, I sure, sorry, just sorry. wanted to take the. Uh, I want to impress upon our audience something that I find a little ironic because one of the things we're supposed to discuss is sovereignty, correct? Now the SLPP Gotham Rajapak said the whole project was a openly nationalist project. Mm. Okay, the whole idea of national. One of the main components of nationalism is to protect our sovereignty. Okay, that's one of the big key words in this. Mm. Okay, now. What is the state of Sri Lanka sovereignty right now? People can't have an election. Uh, does the government itself have real sovereignty when our economic policies are essentially determined in Geneva and wherever the IMF is is located? Okay, so it's it's just so happened. It's ironic that the people that that extol the virtues of sovereignty and independence are the very people who are sitting back and allowing our economic policy to be dictated to us by a multilateral organisation. and they're not even willing to let somebody else go in and negotiate a better deal mm. so it it seems that we are all patriots at this table but it seems like we want different things for the country and i think the the simple fact is that uh there was a there's a story in in Greece uh in the European Commission when the Greek finance minister of a new government after the Greek economy collapsed um when he started talking about the Greek government changing some of the proposals of the IMF the new government one of the councillors uh, the german councillor stood up in the european commission and said elections in greece cannot be allowed to change the economic policies of greece to which the greek finance minister yanis varoufakis is a very famous politician and economist said that's a great gift to the chinese communist party because they believe the same thing they believe in continuity no matter what mm -hmm. right so i just want to impress upon my colleagues do we want to retain some level of economic sovereignty 
And do you not fear that we are losing our economic sovereignty in the hands of this government? Because it seems very obvious to me. It seems that, very obvious. That is the very reason the president has asked the uh, parliament to come out if our push, our negotiations are not good and we are doing something wrong. If he stepped down, that would uh, be a problem. No problem if he was able to step down and hand step over. Step down in hand else. over. This, why can't they come out with and help other? They this is, of done. course, our country, done, not the yeah. president's country. But, uh, this president is at the moment looking after us. That's a, this looking a after us. Yeah. That's it. Uh, after us is that that how you, see? you and me. <laughs> you must understand. Exactly. Nobody asked exactly. you, but exactly. okay. yes. you said. Uh, but but the fact remains, we have to adhere to the constitution. Hmm. If you can't talk a lot of words, but the words should be some sort of meaningful. And if the constitution says the parliament should appoint the president of this country to run the balance period, mm. then it should be done. And people then can't come and say he is not elected in a proper way. He, he doesn't have the mandate. You can't say like that. You have to adhere. As educated people, I think we must inform the people also it's about this. It's the quite thing. clear. If you didn't get even 20,000 votes at the last general election, if you got your seat in parliament through uh, some sort of... Uh, that, that's that's a different matter. That that is the parliament sorry, provides that, not. how can we say it's wrong? It's yeah, it is the constitution. I mean, apart, it's the constitution. Thing. Apart, I, Merely South because Africa, you say a lot of the words. Of the land. Is that legitimate? My learned friend can come out with a lot of words. No, but I, 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 I have, was uh, apartheid I, in South Africa legitimate? Do you think it was a legitimate form of government? No, no, uh, that's, a, that's a very bad example okay, to take give me a this example, argument. Yeah. That's right. So you hmm. can have a lot of good words, but it is practical things should come forward. Hmm. If the government is not doing their best, the president has asked the other people to come out with and I will sh send the proposals straight away to the IMF. If he says like that, why can't these people come out with this? This is not one person's thing. This is our collective uh, agreement. So if we are going to have those things criticized, then we should come out with there have been many submissions the by the election parties for various, various uh, things. different So then yeah. they put the forward to the president and inform the uh, media, this is what we have submitted, president has not uh, adhered to that. You can come out with that. They don't even debate doing. some of the things in parliament. No, they, no, adjourn parliament they, they, they are not, parliament. They are not doing it in parliament. It's, it's not a serious last, parliament. Last, it's yes, it is parliament proceeding. Yeah. You can see what they have come out with the suggestions. No, they have come out with the precards. And that is how the parliament goes. My learned friend can come here and say, if he goes to parliament, he will do it. Mm. I am quite sure because of the way that he is presenting. I am quite happy mm. the way he is presenting. If the words are meaningful mm. and then if the practical things are there, I am totally in agreement. I am in agreement with his conduct. But the fact remains, the politicians are not doing that. That is why I say, I politicians no should election. come out. Anarchy. We can't expect, uh, if we get power, we will come out with, that is, on that the one wrong. side, the president wants to guard against anarchy. Mm. On the other side, he's uh, curt uh, stopping protests and preventing an election. So what? So there are two other yeah. misconceptions in this came in this conversation. Sir. One is that Mr. Ranil Vikramasinghe came from the back door. So the nationalist of this country is not a back door or a wrong door to walk into the sure, parliament. Sure, sure, sure. Right? Yeah, so that's that's it's that we should so, so sit in parliament fine. Yeah. Anyone then, can come. Yes. Then 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 all three NPP <laughs> members came from the salon door. So no, no, no. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. So uh, uh, according to the current current working of our constitution, then Milan, but just just entertain me for one second. This is I mean, is this a possibility? I'm pretty sure uh, President's Council Radi Silva would also know. So Anyone who is even not on the official national list mm. of a party yeah. can, can be come included. into parliament through the national list. Yeah. So, for all intended purposes, if tomorrow the UMP or the SLPP or whichever party has a majority yeah. in parliament yeah. thinks that I should be president, the party, not the people, not anyone else, not the general public, this is not the mandate of the people, but they just think, forget me, let's say they think Shenai has to be president. Right? They think Shenai has to be president. They can take her into parliament through the national list 
make the first have oh. a vote in parliament or i mean oh. at, at, the, at the time when she has to wait president. for some time and she will have to wait for some time <laughs> after she will be elected. she will be president that is the constitution is it the spirit of the constitution that is the no the democracy but that is the constitution no 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 but that is the 2015 up to now mm. have they come out with a constitution but, but mr silva no but they mr. have not done true mr silva there are there are there are things called i mean there are things called conventions there are things yes. that are written down in the constitution yeah. the national list was intended to bring in professionals, professionals in the parliament don't want Nine. to be included Perfect. in the political yes. 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 so now in now 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 now, now anru kumar disanayaka harini and if something uh, is wrong wrong yes uh, no so, so all no, three are wrong don't divert the discussion don't divert the discussion no 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 divert the fact this is the discussion if the ranil wickremasinghe is came from the salon door i don't have to argue dr harini is a professional dr harini is a professional okay but others are not professional in that Yeah, I'm, I'm just saying I'm just saying no no we have okay, let's, let's, let's okay, have a president have a president that has been elected into parliament in which uh, i don't know form is he a professional Rani, so you think is a professional no 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 that is no no let, let, no, 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 no 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 and no <laughs> No, no, that way. Answer my question. No, answer my question. No, no, I understand. No, no. When you are the leader of the party, mm -hmm. which contested, which won the national list yes. uh, seat from that previous election, so why can't he come to the parliament from that? Uh, We're not saying that he from can't. That, uh, saying that from that list, uh, him being the leader of the party. Yes. Uh, that is how even Anru Kumar Disanayake came in. I mean, I mean, I mean, those are. Uh, Those are, those are simple misinterpretations but i think those misinterpretation goes a long way that is why i hmm. intervened and said when you say nationalism is a back door it's one thing I, to come say, in the even even in it's one even in sjb even in sjb dr harsha came in from uh, first Once time you come into dr harsha came then from the national president yes. by the majority in parliament yes. who completely messed up the entire country and uh, collapsed the economy So now, this since, the, since we are on the, on the topic it's, of the constitution, Mr. Silva, I want to ask you. Yeah. But if the my gentleman here telling me legal that legal that is legitimate, I want to, I want to. No, we are not saying that is legitimate. Yeah. That, that is the wrong argument. That, that, Again, Mr. Silva, it is legitimate. It is constitution. What we are saying, it is constitution. So then we have to change. That's what I am telling you. On that topic, Mr. Silva, I want to ask you. Now, since we are talking about the constitution, and since the topic of tonight's discussion also includes a aspect on the social contract. Yes. Since the 17th Amendment. what we've been doing is tinkering with the 78 constitution yes. right yes. 17 yes. 18 yes. 19 yes. 20 yes. 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 and there on and yes. now i think there is another amendment also being prepared yes. so if the president like you said truly loves us and is taking care of us don't you think while the economic recovery process is ongoing he should also initiate a process to abolish the executive presidency and bring forward a new constitution with greater accountability greater checks and balances and with a parliamentary system of governance it should be done we so why I, should I, I, do, done? i don't know whether the, we should abolish the presidency mm. is a different matter we have to discuss and see whether it is suitable but to our country but in my personal view i feel like most of the problems in this country has happened because of the executive presidency no no exactly Not really. my, my personal no, no, my that's that's limited that's power that's yeah. different discussion it's a different discussion so i won't go into it but i'm saying it as we should have a president yes. with limited power mm -hmm. right that's what i am telling you so we have to discuss this mm -hmm. we have to listen to the people so this is not the time to discuss that but remember there are two uh, drafts are pending mm. the 2015 also yes. they started yes. half way to because Even of the one bird our president gota biraj pak came they started again they started and there's a there a uh, 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 constitution prepared mm. and uh, that at that point when it is about to present mm. then the uh, president came uh, to media and said i am a fair person and as it quite correct by now, He, having said that I am a fair person, he continued to go, be, be there. Mm. So that's the wrong thing that he had done. So anyhow, the, we must change the constitution mm. according to our legitimate uh, rights. Mm. So that is why we have to discuss and we have to do that. But unfortunately, 
2015 to 19, they were not doing these so-called people, Malimao, they are not doing that. So, they were not doing. But uh, what I'm saying even is, in government, Malimao, they, 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 no, they, they have every right. Assumption. They talk all these things in <laughs> parliament, but not the constitution. Because they know, we, 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 we will be there because of this person's constitution. Uh, that is to why to quite correctly said, they are members have been appointed by this constitution. So we will, we will abide by this constitution. We can't say anything to the people who have been there now. But at the same time, as he quite correctly pointed out, we have to change our constitution and then proceed to if we want to have proper government. Until that time, no election. No, no, that's no, a no, that's Am I, uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Yeah, that is yeah. necessary. Go ahead, go ahead. That is necessary. That is completely yeah. a wrong way. Totally Mr. Mr. Ma, <laughs> that, that is what they are doing. Do some, do they some want some on the stage. election not to be save people or uh, to, to do something to the people. They want to go and say we have the majority and change that we want to go go away. He, that's how can they say? Mr. Mr. How can they say? How can they say, Charlotte? How can they say after getting? the majority, we will send uh, b b b ra b this president home. How can they say that? Let, they let me, so, uh, two he instances. Answer. Yes, let me, let me, let you get an opportunity. Right. Right. Let and me then say then two instances. Ah, right. 19, Maitri, when President Maitripal Sirsen elected by a presidential election, mm -hmm. when Ranil Vikram Singh had 46, he was appointed in Prime Minister next day. Hmm. 2015. Yeah, my talk about majority. Yeah, it, it didn't happen. Local because, government. Be, wait, wait, wait. Because of the results of the presidential election, parliament composition changed. Mm -hmm. Same thing happened when Gotabe Rajapaksa elected, and then before the parliamentary election, uh, who was the prime minister, Mahindra, I believe, yes, Mahindra Mahindra Rajapaksa. Rajapaksa. Got that position, mm -hmm. when he didn't have the majority. Good argument, sir. You think same will wait, happen wait, from wait, the local right, council right, election? Yeah. 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 That's so you can't undermine or underestimate any election. You can't. Elections are, whether it is local government, provincial council, parliament, or in the constitution, there are two things. One is election, two, other thing, general election. What is the name of the election commission? It is not general election commission, it is election commission. Election means provincial council, local government, general election, presidential election. Don't uh, misinterpret this because public are hearing, we are lawyers, we are accountable. Well, to the public. No, that is yeah. why I am questioning. Yeah, I know. Right. 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 Mr. De Silva, now there's a question. There's a question that has been posed to you from a viewer. Uh, it says Article 3 of the Constitution uh, and goes on to read Article 3. I don't think I need to read it on the show and uh, waste any of our time because you no, definitely no. would know very well. It's the states that the uh, sovereignty is vested with the people. Uh, the question that posed by this viewer is Mr. De Silva is justifying the appointment of the president as per the Constitution. But the same constitution protects the people's sovereignty as per Article 3, including the right to franchise. So how can you justify that? No, that's what I'm, in the first instance, as I started, I said the constitution provides the people to have their vote hmm. rights, hmm. right? If somebody is going to deny forever, it's wrong. It's, but, I, but the postponement is different. Of deny forever, right. I, I think if you deny the people's franchise, that's wrong. Yes. Like, I think you said deny forever. Do you election. In the sense that we are not providing them to come out and vote mm. simple way, as we said, have the election indefinitely postponed. Mm. It's wrong. It's an arbitrary decision to suit political, uh, Inter whatever your interests are, whatever your narrow sort of no, goals are. It's, it's simple as that. It's very easy to I mean, talk things but the priority and the practical issues are there i am for the, that thing i am a practical person i can see what we want is at the moment the essential thing as i said quite correctly now we have a, a good harvest and then the 11 billion oh, yeah, so, have been allocated yeah. no what i am saying is don't, don't laugh no no it's my true. Friend we are has to a lot of topic that is my concern a lot of good words no, but the agriculture practically and yeah. now we have provided they have provided necessary requirements to have this harvest and because of that they are going to spend 11 billion and they are going to take 110 per kilo uh, uh, what happened to a harvest in the previous years because of uh, the, that uh, uh, political yeah. decision. What, what were the repercussions for those political decisions no. and policy failures? Have we seen any 
sort of uh, questioning of the previous uh, government, cabinet members, have they come forward oh, and apologised? Yeah. Are support to apologise for the policy failures? Had for which, which one? Which one? For the reduction in the taxes, the fertiliser policy, no, the, the not going to the IMF no, no, on time. No, no, uh, no. Can I answer one, one by yes, one? It's a very important. Yeah. It's a yeah, very yeah, important. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Number one, the policy decision which was on the fertiliser, from the very first day, there was a very clear division within the government some supported that decision some didn't support that decision but president very clearly manifest why he made the decision and there is a large proportion of politicians government officials and people supported that cause and there is another people another, supported the, that cause yeah. there are a lot people, of people, people were not who, no that it. no you two can't say that how do you no, say but, 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 when, when, but when even people okay no, so when, when you take a policy on fertilizer yeah if the doctors are supporting it, yeah. does that constitute as people? Because fertilizer. No, no. I'm from, when I say people, I'm talking about the farmers. There are Not farmers them. who support. There, there are there are there are at least around at least around even, even even that time. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 political parties. Yeah. No, no. I have to answer this. Yes, yeah? yes, 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 Now, yes, now, yes, now, yes, now yes. political well, the <laughs> political party actually led the massive uh, protest Protest. wave among the country. Uh, led by uh, most of their candidates at the moment from their political party, they were the leaders of all these protests. But now, from the very first day, I was against the decision of suddenly going and announcing this but conversion but of uh, organic agriculture suddenly into a, the, the Sri Lankan agriculture into a organic, organic uh, farm. Because the from, the, from, from the yeah. very first day, I was against that. From the very first day. And there were a lot of people against that. Now, I, from the birth, I was a farmer because from my father, grandfather, we all had our own uh, uh, paddy, paddy farms. And even in our paddy farms, some still used uh, urea. And some didn't, some converted. So, so if you look at it, it is a small number still converted. So there was a support, small support. There was a, because there was a very much a politically uh, motivated opposition to that. And but, finally, but no, 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 I'm coming to that. No, I'm coming to that. Why not? Okay, let's just, no, in the best interest, in the best interest of all our viewers and to get the proper facts through, let's look at the facts, okay? There is no country, and I stress, no country in the world that has 100% organic fertilizer. Of course, yeah. of course. There is no country. Yes. 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 I think Nepal yes. tried to, but there is uh, yes. 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 no country in the world yes. that has 75% of organic cultivation. Okay. Yes. Yes. There is no country in the world that has 50% organic cultivation. Probably, yes. Okay. yes. There is also no country in the world that has 25% organic okay. cultivation. Okay. Okay. As far as I know, uh -huh. the most amount of organic cultivation is somewhere less than 10 percent oh. so you're telling me yeah. right when the president came out yeah. and told the people look here uh, or, or, because these are facts these are facts just because the president doesn't say it doesn't change them in fact if he didn't say it he's concealing information which almost amounts to lying to the people so you're saying the president comes out and tells look there's no country in the world that has 100 percent organic fertilizer there's no country in the world that has 50 percent organic fertilizer there's no country in the world that has 25 percent only about 10 percent but we are going to do 100% and you think any person right thinking, non-politically aligned would support this? Because now you are saying that the opposition was politically motivated. No, no that is not what I said. Was no, that is not what I said. That is again a misinterpretation. Okay. What I said very clearly when he came out and made that announcement, there were people who supported that cause. There were people who didn't support that cause, including myself. That right. is what I said. So people including who supported myself, it, people who supported it, were not politically motivated. Also, just to just no, point no, out, no, we don't, no. we don't, uh, we don't put yeah. implement policy based on whether X supports and Y supports. Yeah. Okay, policy is implemented based on a justification, a group of papers, exactly. some studies, Facts. some evidence, Facts. some Facts. information. Intelligence. That's how we do it. So no, every, no, no. That single is, that is, organization yeah, that, 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 that has any knowledge about this green uh, agriculture and uh, non-agriculture uh, non fertilizer, non-chemical fertilizer, every report said that this will lead to a devastation of Sri Lanka's agricultural productivity. Every report said that. So if unless Mr. Rajapaksa or any member of the SLPP can show me a report by a, a considered uh, organization, organization that said this can work or an individual I think it was basically um, yeah. uh, a policy failure no I haven't seen such a report that.
I haven't seen such report. Any report saying 100% organic agriculture is going to save the Sri Lanka or going to bail out the Sri Lanka, or that is the ideal solution for Sri Lanka. I haven't seen any, yeah, any well, such report. Why did the president either. then implement that policy? That's I, the question. I, what did, I don't what did know. your party I do? Don't know. That did is, your party come I, out and say no? We're against our president in doing this. And no, and not a single MP, MP no. said that. Not no, a there single are so MP many said MPs it. Okay? Once yeah, in the yeah, country crashed, one day after that, no, 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 no,
what I see is the uncle of the current president, President J.R. Jai Jayawardhana. There were certain decisions taken that restricted the sovereignty of the people for various other reasons, various other reasons. At that time, there was the war was there, we had the Indian influence, all of that. But the people's right to vote was restricted. Similarly, the people's right to protest was restricted. And where did that lead us? So my question to you, uh, Mr. De Silva, and uh, uh, but no, Melinda is all for elections, so I'm going to leave you all. No, but I, I need one minute to add what you said now. Yes, please. Before I pose. Yeah, the yeah, yeah. That is again a kind of agreement. I was last year, the beginning of last year, I was in Germany, invited by the Liberal Party of Germany for many other young politicians. We were studying the liberal political values from 15 other countries, including myself from Sri Lanka. So then I went and I visited these concentration camps. So that's a part of the tour. 80% of the, 80 of the crowd, 80-90% of the crowd in that concentration camp but German school kids taken brought by the German schools and they explained by teachers about what what our grandfathers did. grandmothers did wrong mm. Mm. and what you should not repeat yes to make a great nation yes like Germany and at that point I was thinking and I wrote an article that night and published on my Facebook exactly that is what we haven't done Exactly. What happened from 1949, not like probably two of you, my entire future depends on do something which new. right yes. track we are we taking in this politics. Do. That's hmm. very, important you to do so. very important for people yes. like us. So I'm I'm completely in agreement. Hmm. Hmm. No political party. Anurakumar Disanayaka, O Mahindra Raja Paksha, or Anil Vikrama Singh, don't put it only to Mahindra Raja Paksha. None of these leaders have looked back the past. And confess. I wonder if that is the issue today. You are only you are only putting Mahindra Rajapaksa in that. I can Mahindra Rajapaksa and Basil Rajapaksa and Gopal Rajapaksa step down from the power. No, 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 no. What is the question? Sorry, I didn't. Internal pressure in the Pohotwa government. I can't understand. Again, no, 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 no
no one asked him to leave the party but kept him as the political failure the, it, Milind, something Milind, no, it, it, that, that is no that's how that's how, that's how, that's how politics right? work Milind, that and Sajid Premadas no I have to answer now Sajid, yeah, okay. Sajid Premadas failed continuously when he became the leader of the party no one asked him to leave he is continuing as the leader probably he will be the uh, presidential candidate mm. for a bigger coalition Milind, the now, next Milind, time. You have to, Milind, you have and, to and, understand and in our, when, and a, in when the camp. leader, Milind, when, the, when a leader of a political party fails, right? Say, under Kumar, fails, I, when the country fails no, because no, no. their decision. Yes, exactly. No, 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 Kusum. This is a very specific question. Uh, Milind, when the leader of a political party, under Kumar Dishanak, you see, he has failed countless times. What was the effect on the country? Exactly. What was the effect on the country? No, they, they have never ran the country. Exactly. No, no, exactly. No, no. Exactly. When, when he fails, the there is no, yeah, effect, on the no effect on the country. Some no effect on the country. When Sajid the Premadasa, country. as the leader of the SJB or the vice leader of the UMP or whatever position, they have, the country. when he fails, what the effect the on the country? Haven't no the country. effect. But, Milinda, you need to understand. Gota when say, when we speak yeah. about Mahinda Rajapaksha. No, Gota Abe Rajapaksha was the president. Mahinda. So, Mahinda Rajapaksha was the prime minister and the leader of the SJBP. Yeah. And the so leader of the SLP. When, when, yeah. the president, when the president initially came into power, yeah. Melinda, the prime minister had almost similar powers to the president under the 19th amendment, amendment. of the constitution. Yeah. But immediately changed. And right. Immediately. Okay. Immediately. Immediately, understood. immediately yeah. changed. Yeah. And then and the, the president promise, had the, president the, had the biggest the, power of the history, 20th amendment. So now you all are going to use President Gota Bir Rajapaksa as a scapegoat. No. 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 Just telling the facts since you are asking. Now, since you asked the question, I have to bring the name. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> so you you asked the question. You are asking about I, my mind. You said we made question. the mind the Rajapaksha president, and I said no. Gota Be Rajapaksha was the president. What, my he was, was, he was removed during all. Gota Be Rajapaksha was yeah. removed from the presidency. Hmm. Gota Be Rajapaksha was. Gota Be Rajapaksha not the uh, leader of SLPP. Mm -hmm. Even Gota Be Rajapaksha's government mm -hmm. was not just a SLPP government. It was. 18 political parties came together, which 12 parties now are already out from the coalition. Hmm. You know, so it's, it's it's he was leading. Yes, SLPP was majority, but you know, 12 other parties, 18 so I other think parties. There was a, there was a and slight, there was a slight miscommunication there, Milinda. Now let's forget for President Gota Rajpaksa. Let's take Mahindra Rajpaksa and Basil Rajpaksa. Right? He was the Prime Minister, and thereafter Basil Rajpaksa became the Minister of Finance. Yeah, yeah. But they also held positions within the party. So, yeah, yeah. relating to what Kusum asked you, yeah. what he asked you was, is yeah. there pressure from within the party now yeah. for Mahindra Rajpaksa and Basil Rajpaksa to step down, given the failures that we experienced in the recent past? Exactly. But I, 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 I yes. actually, I, that's that's a good question. I have a, I have a, I have a, I have a bit different answer for that. There is no pressure for Basil Rajapaksha to step down from the national organizer seat or Mahinda Rajapaksha to step down from the party leadership. Mm. Because we, we all know the party cardinals very well who can organize the party properly, who can give the leadership to the party, who can lead the party for the next election. That is up to the party. It's a cult of personality. But, but there is... A, there is a, very good pressure within the party, especially from people like and people like me and many other progressive in the party mm. to, to change different policies, to change different narratives, to change different positions within the party. Now 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 that has been happening. The the, the policy directions which we are taking have changed. Mm. The narrative which we are taking have changed. The some of the associates we had as small small different political parties who had much when we have a very social democratic policy who had much ultra national political policies now they have left the party because we have isolated ourselves from them mm. yeah there are there is a good pressure <coughs> things are changing yes right I mean, but the, not for what it's you also want. very sorry. confusing because the party <laughs> not for what you want sorry for that the SLP <laughs> calls itself a social democratic party but the first thing one of the first things Gautam Rajapaksa did was reduce taxes which is not a social democratic. Why party. not? Why so not? It's not really. No, because, why because not? Because low, low why taxes not? Uh, to spur economic gro growth is uh, center right economic no, policy. That the social no, democratic no, policies no, they, no. mean you tax is, and provide this is services. very This so is very it's, orthodox. It's, con way, it's confusing. No, this is very orthodox way of reading economic books. 
But yeah, in, the, in, the, in the no, in the, the real the politics, the poli in the policies, policies were there is a different the discussion. If you want that's, to have that's, that's that, that's that, that there is a difference between have. politics and governance. Also, no, we are just, we are talking about governance, good governance, democracy. The so politics may be, but sir, but we sir, but I people agree. are crying for governance. Sir, I agree, but. You have a political representation here. Yeah. I have but a political I told, representation here. I came as a lawyer yeah. to talk about governance, right? Uh, right. But Not how? But, about, <laughs> if if but you ask for a thought, political debate, but, but you are invited are, us. Yes. Clarify, right? No. You are invited us under a particular topic, yeah. right? Yeah. True meaning of democracy, exactly. people are, I mean, that, that, that and then, then from Then from which no, ideological no. view you <laughs> bring to the table? I am very honest. You can't have dual I'm personality here, Melinda. You can't. You Who can't. is having dual personality? No, so. I am not having a dual personality. I no, came I'm, here, I started my conversation can't. saying, yes, what is my political yeah, affiliation? Exactly, exactly. When I, I question the your political your affiliation, we you are saying... Bit, bit, uh, maybe both are... Uh, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. I think, yes. I, think, I think we've gone a little bit over time, but of course I will provide... That's uh, a good conversation. Yes, you. definitely. It was a very productive conversation. But before we go into closing uh, statements, I just have one question. Uh, Mr. Silva, I asked this question from you before also. I didn't get an answer and I think our viewers also if uh, we were caught this, might be still waiting for an answer. Now, as the situation is, we are. I'm agreeing with you, uh, at least for the for the for getting this answer uh, or, or an opinion from you regarding what people can do. Uh, we are not in a position to hold an election, according to what you said, right? People can't protest on the street. That is also an agreed fact. I think it will be silly to dispute it because every time a protest is on the street or protesters are on the street, even when two people were standing close to uh, golf face, mm. they were asked to leave. So people can't protest, people can't vote. So a person who is angry at the government, at what they are doing, and then you said that you when are you too, because, fly, sky. because uh, you are too, because they are I spending thought. lavishly and all of that. So my simple question to you, Mr. De Silva, is what, what is can a person do? person can help the government help the government yes overcome no How? we are all suffering we, not that we, 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 so, one person so, so that's a, that's a no, no, bit of a I vague mean, statement why, sir. like how why? would they help the government help in the sense that without doing unnecessary protests they can protest so, so mr the Silva, way that they are they are doing the I'm way sorry. that they are doing how can we uh, uh, i'm sorry you can't call protests un no 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 these are no 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 in agreement with that because they have the right to protest. They have the right I to. should have the right to protest. Yes. I will come and say this is wrong. Okay. That is my way of doing Freedom it. of expression. The, yes. But the people who can't come here, they can have every right to protest. Yes. The way they are protesting and the way they are being handled by the politician are the wrong thing. That is why I'm saying it is not good. If they are not providing normal uh, way to run the country, and if they are not providing the people to go home after their work, what is the protest they are uh, doing? Okay, okay, Mr. Uh, Dissler, uh, let me let me. Protest is effective, yeah. but the, the way that they are. Henley, the protest is the issue here. But Mr. De Silva, when you say protests are acceptable, yeah, yes. I mean, take our Independence Day celebrations, just a day before that, two girls, I mean, with all due respect to the girls, they had, they had more courage than all the men in this country. Two girls were standing close to, I believe, Golf Face Hotel yeah. in Colombo, which is quite a distance from where the, the, the Independence Day celebrations yeah. were being held, carrying two placards about four to five or maybe even more senior police officers you know about three four feet taller than them came and asked them to leave so is that not how to protest then how do you protest no no that's wrong that's, that's wrong, wrong. Yeah, that the way that the police handle are the police uh, the police handle so okay. they can't do that right that, exactly what okay. i'm saying no, 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 I understand. the way that the people gathered right right and uh, you're saying large in, protest, large protest. Large protest. Uh, but protest uh, in small what, what that two ladies that it's perfectly right. Perfect. They have every right to really? go and do that. Really? Even even before standing the Arliga Mandir or hmm. President's house, you they can. can do that. They can do that. They have every right to do that. And only not only that uh, lady who is there in Sajab hmm. can go there, but the uh, uh, two ladies <laughs> also can go there and do that. That the way that I I, I, I use my words very correct. Understood. The way that they are handling, hmm. they are being handled hmm. by the politicians are wrong. So that is illegal. Right. So that is why I am concerned. Otherwise, people should come and protest, and then and, and they no people. But, but, but your but your but your response to my question: What should people do when yeah. they can't protest or 
when they no. can't protest the way they like or <laughs> maybe large protest they can't protest in large groups yes. when they can't vote what can they do you said support the government yeah. but mr de silva people the government in the sense that yes yes you are not not yeah. handling everything but you must understand supporting in the sense that without doing these things politicians as well as people should know we are suffering at the moment but we are trying to people come out. Are, people are doing these things people are protesting because the government is taking wrong decisions and not going back on that now not going like back. having flamboyant independence day Those celebrations things and are not, not protesting accept. against opposition right no. they are protesting against the government policies and this day by day is, thing, right They, so you to be government people you are talking about they might do something wrong hmm. that does not mean that uh, everything they are doing is wrong no they they we are we are criticizing that right. that's yeah. wrong okay. right but the way that they are handling this this country as i told you the how they uh, Giving the farmers necessary fertilizer, mm. how they pay the salaries mm. without this difficulty, mm. those are the things that should be con uh, con getting into concern. Mm. So, if we can wait for some time, the president has clearly stated, as he said, there should be a, a clear uh, indication. Mm. He has stated that within end of end of this year. we will provide lot of things to people and we will see that people will come out with this crisis and for that purpose they are going to do Mr. give uh, 10 kilos of uh, rice to 20 lakhs people so that is how they are do you may people can laugh for those things they they are the people who are suffering they will be looked after for that they need money they ask the people to bring money and they ask most of the people to send our things to the various countries M and get everything Mr. to De Silva, our we'll have to we we'll have to go into closing statements with right. silva so what i am saying is at this stage hmm. it is for a short period of time hmm. we have to postpone it that does not mean indefinitely they are going to postpone hmm. if they are going to do that it's wrong hmm. and as he said there should be time limit and within that period they have to adjust themselves hmm. and then uh, help the people to use their support right thank you very much uh, president's council you are de silva former president of the bar association and advisor to the ministry of justice uh, so i will consider that your closing statement president's council de silva since you were given much space on this program today uh, i'd like to move my attention to the closing statement of uh, uh, kusum vijay tilaka political commentator kusum you have Two minutes. I'm sorry. Um, I won't take two minutes. I just want to quote uh, a piece from the 1920s by the American uh, political commentator Walter Lippmann. Um, he noted uh, the manufacture of consent and how the decisions the, the decisions are kept in the hands of the few. You keep the general population marginalized, reduce them to apathy and obedience, allow them to participate in the political system, but only as consumers. allow them to ratify the decisions of others propagate the notion that we should be controlled by our leaders and not the other way around and that's exactly what's happening in sri lanka right now thanks thank you very much kusum 30 seconds <laughs> in record time okay now i move my attention to milindra rajapaksa additional director general department of government information for your closing statement thank you very much for facilitating this fantastic conversation <clears throat> i think we are in a time we all are suffering as a nation there are a lot of mishandles done by different leaders different groups over the period of beyond 70 years you know now we have come to a the ultimate uh, uh, we have come to one of the pin points of the history which we all have to build consensus on different things you know politically we don't agree on many things i would never agree on certain things because i stand by certain political ideology but those things change with the time with the progressive ideas come into our uh, political core thinking then we change things that i have seen that from uh, young people from uh, different political parties the lot of young people who work with me uh, when i was the spokesperson for mr gotabe rajapaksha who worked with me to make a gotabe rajapaksha the president in those whatsapp group most of them are now supporting npp some of them are with uh, mr anukumar bisanayaka now that's how politics works that is fine but i think this is a moment we all should find a fine balance between all our political ideologies yes let's argue on constitutional amendments let's argue on 
different uh, 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 economic policies uh, which we are fighting for. Let's argue on elections. Fine, that's all fine. But I think this is a crucial time. We all sit together and see how we can build political consensus at least for one year to come out from this crisis. Then we all will have a country where we all can again freely can debate on our political matters, on our ideologies. Thank you. Thank you very much, Melinda Rajapaksha, Additional Director General, Department of Government Information. I finally turn my attention to Attorney at Law, J.M. Vijay Pandara. So we were on the topic of true meaning of democracy, people, sovereignty, and social contract. In layman's view, what it is required is always the ruler who wins an election must continue to have the legitimacy from the people. Continue to have the legitimacy from the people. Uh, UN Declaration of Human Rights preamble says if a particular elected government failed to provide basic human rights, people have tried to become rebellion. It is there in the preamble. Then, in our country, we face that situation. Due to various failures, we thrown out executive president. I don't admit it as a resignation, right? Thrown out. Prime Minister thrown out, chased away. Ministers of Cabinet chased away. Those are small group. Then the what was the failure? We couldn't chased away Parliament. They remain there. But try to burn. Please, no, please, I... please, please, uh, <laughs> please, <laughs> please, <laughs> please, please, <laughs> please, please, please. Right. So, so what is the message communicated? Parliament also lacks legitimacy. The members who lacks legitimacy elected single person, solar person. He was a solo single man and he lacks legitimacy how can we talk about reconciliation solution negotiation with foreign countries when the head of the state lacks legitimacy the own party who had voted for him says it is not our government where we stand thank you very much uh, attorney at law jm vijay bandara of course uh, a fiery discussion to say the very least but of course in good faith for the betterment of the nation and of course to keep our viewers up to date. So once again, on uh, behalf of News First, I take this opportunity to thank, thank Attorney at Law, J.M. Vijay Bandara. Thank you very much, sir, for coming on our show. Thank you very much, Kusum Vijay Tilaka, always keeping our shows very active. President's Council, you are De Silva, former president of the Bar Association, advisor to the Ministry of Justice. Thank you very much, sir, uh, for giving us your uncensored opinion on uh, the topic of discussion today. And of course, last and certainly not least, Milinda Rajapaksha, Additional Director General, Department of Government Information. There's a lot on the line for you, of course, as a politician and also as a bureaucrat. Uh, so despite differences in opinion that were expressed on the show today, I thank you to uh, Milinda Rajapaksha and uh, with all the other panelists for giving us a really, really good discussion. Of course, this discussion wouldn't have been possible if not for the journalist on the program today. On my right, uh, Shanaya Dedigama. Thank you, Shanaya. And on my left, definitely. Jamal Ratnaika, thank you Jamal. Thank you very much to all our viewers out there for tuning in as always to Face the Nation. Of course, the future of Sri Lanka is in your hands. Whenever you go to vote next, uh, make sure you make the right decision. Until we meet again, take care and good night.